Hello, I'm Dave with Kids in Character again, and thank you for taking the time to watch our fire safety videos. I'm glad you, you took the time to make this investment in your family, and I hope that we can provide some information that will help you should you ever be in the situation I found myself in. On Thursday, I was working at home. I'm very fortunate to have a job where I can work at home. So I was sitting here at the table on a conference call making my morning shake. You can still see my blender and the remains of a very chocolatey shake at this point sitting on the counter. Uh, I was on a call with about 30 people on the line giving a, a welcome speech to a group of people who had just joined the company. And that's when my dog came and barked at me. And if there's a hero in this whole ordeal, it's my dog because he told me before my smoke detectors went off that there was a fire in the house. He was acting very strange, running back and forth to the front of the house and barking at me, so I moved from the table and walked up to the front of the house. Walked up here to the front of the home, this used to be a very beautiful home, to where the garage door was. And looking off to the side, I could see in the garage door that there was something coming in from the top of the door. Today it's all charred and burned out and there's not much that you can see, but on last Thursday, there was smoke rolling in from the top of that door. I know it sounds strange to say, but my first thought was, is that smoke? I thought maybe it was steam from my car or the radiator. Of course, I hadn't run my car that day, so that made no sense, but my brain could not rationalize why there would be steam or smoke coming in from that door. The first tip that I wanna give you is if you ever see smoke coming in from a door and you're not sure if it's smoke, it's smoke. Assume it is until you're proven wrong otherwise. We all know that you should never open a door if there is fire behind it. What you should do is you should go up and place your hands on the door to see if it's warm. Now I don't have much of a door here to show you, so let me show you on a closet door that I have that's still standing. When you want to check a door to see if it's hot, you should use the back of your hand and touch it to see if you feel heat. If you do, assume that there's fire there and you need to keep that door closed. Now, if the door is not hot, the way to open it is to get down low. Get down low and put your body up against the door so that when you open the door, if you see smoke or detect smoke, smell it in any way, you can immediately shove the door shut. So remember, feel it first with the back of your hand. And then when you do open it, get down low in case there's smoke that will come in and be ready to shut it right away. Unfortunately, that's a mistake I made. I didn't check the door for heat. I opened the door and immediately saw flames coming up over the rim of the door and out from the side. At that point is where I learned my second tip that I'm gonna share with you. I hung up the call from work and realized that I had to call 911. I also wanted to grab a fire extinguisher that I kept just inside of the garage door. I was trying to grab the fire extinguisher and I was trying to dial 911 with the other hand and panicking. And that's when I had to tell myself, stop and calm down. The second tip for you is take the time to calm down and dial 911. I couldn't get the call to go through because I hadn't completely waited for the line to clear for my previous call. So I set the fire extinguisher down, I stopped and I dialed 911. Dial 911 first because every second counts in getting the fire department here. That's a mistake I made. I stayed in the house. I should have gotten out first. After I called 911, I grabbed the fire extinguisher and I emptied it on the fire. This is the third tip I'm going to share with you. Many of you probably have a fire extinguisher in your home and if you don't, you should get one, at least one for your home. But here's the thing that I realized. Although I've had fire extinguishers in my home for year, years, I've never used one. Now, they're not hard, you pull the pin and squeeze the handle, but to be honest, it took me a minute to get it working because I was surprised at how hard it was to squeeze the handle. I thought I was doing something wrong. I'm guessing that your family would have the same experience. Buy a fire extinguisher, and go out somewhere where you can practice, spray it into a garbage can or whatever you need to do, but have everyone in your family try it out so they know how to do it and they're comfortable with its operation. When you're done, you can have it recharged but that practice may be invaluable. Now this is a mistake I made that I want to talk to you about. I used the fire extinguisher to try and put out the flames. In fact, I emptied the fire extinguisher on the fire inside of the garage. And the flames died down for a second, but they came right back. Now realize your job is not to put out the fire. 
you're not going to put out uh, a big fire at all. In fact, they say if a fire is bigger than a small waste basket, then a fire extinguisher is not going to put it out. Uh, you shouldn't be trying to do that. You should be trying to get out. So realize a fire extinguisher is a tool to help you escape. That's all it is. If your path is blocked by fire and you can't get out of the house, use the fire extinguisher to clear your path. It's not there to try and save your house. It's not going to work. So if it's not blocking your path, don't bother. I wasted time and those minutes very nearly cost me my life. It was at that point that my smallest dog ran between my legs and directly into the fire. This is something that I want to talk to you about. The 911 dispatcher was very clear and told me to get out of the house. They're telling you that to save your life. And I chose to disregard that. I chose to disregard it because I wanted to save my animals and I thought I couldn't let them die. But this is something you have to think about. If you choose to stay in the house to try and save possessions, animals, or whatever, you're very likely going to lose your life. Ask yourself this question. Can your family survive without you? We all love our pets, but would your family rather have you die trying to save them, or would it be better for you to save yourself? I made the wrong choice, but in that moment of emergency, you don't have time to think about it. Think about it now so that if you're in that situation, you will know what you should do. My advice would be, leave your doors open and give your pets a way out, but get out of the house. It doesn't take long for a fire to spread, and you need to realize you have seconds, not minutes, to get out of the house. When the fire started in my garage and my dog ran inside, I realized I had to get her out. So I hit the garage door opener button, hoping that it would open up and allow her just to run outside, but the wires had already burned. And that's when I made the decision to go inside of the garage. When I got here, I had to corral her because my dog was very scared, but just in the time it took me, maybe 30 seconds, to pick her up, I turned around and the entire doorway was covered in flames and I realized that exit was blocked and I wasn't getting out that way. It left me with two choices. One was the main garage door itself and the second was the side door to the garage. But like many of you, I had piled ladders and lumber and sports equipment and backpacks and all manner of things in front of that door and had been piling up for years. The door wasn't accessible. So here's the, another tip for you. The doors in your house are exits to save your life. Don't ever allow yourself to block them. That garbage in the corner was not worth my life. Get rid of it. Make sure every door in your house is passable because when you need it, you really need it. I realized that the main garage door was my only exit. I knew I need both hands to operate it, so I took my dog and I put her in my car that was sitting here. I, my thinking was that it would at least corral her and I wouldn't lose her again. So I opened the door and put the dog into the car. And I pulled the emergency release on the door and lifted it up. Now this is two things that I realized later. The first is that the release cord on all of our garage doors are a nylon cord that come from the manufacturer that way. Well, I also had nylon cords hanging bikes from the ceiling on a pulley system in my garage. And the bikes were falling down all around me. Fires get hot very fast and those nylon cords don't last long in that kind of heat. On the next garage door opener I own, there will be a chain in place, not a nylon cord, and I'd suggest that you all do the same. The door itself came up very easily, but this was another learning that I realized later. I knew how to pull the emergency release and open my garage door because I've done it before, but nobody in my family has ever done that. They don't know where the release is, they've never tried it out. I want you all tonight to get the family when they're home, go out into the garage and pull the emergency release on your garage door and have them try lifting the door. They need to know how to do this. Because in this case, this garage door was my only exit to the outside world. Some of you are probably asking why at this point I didn't just hop in my car and drive through the door if I needed. And there's a simple answer. And that is I realized I didn't have the keys to my car available. So something else I want you all to consider is Keeping the keys somewhere close to your car is inaccessible. I know we're all worried about theft, but you can hide them if you need to. But in an emergency, if you're in here and your vehicles are in here, you need to get them out. Not to save the vehicle, to save your own life. In this case, my keys were back in the house, so that's when I left the garage and entered back into the house to get my other animals and to get the keys to my car. 
Now again, I want you all to consider going back into a house. It was not the right thing to do. But at the time, without having time to think, I just reacted and that's what I chose to do. Uh, it took just a few minutes for me to get back into the house and get my keys, come back out and back my car out of the house. And in the time that it took me to do that, a matter of less than two minutes, probably more like a minute, the ceiling had caught fire and the ceiling collapsed as I pulled my car out of the garage. By the time I got my car to the bottom of the driveway, the entire garage was engulfed in flames. I escaped by seconds. If you waste time saving animals or doing other things like I did, you're wasting time that could save your life. I'd encourage you to listen to the dispatchers, do what they say, and get out of the house. I want to thank you for joining us for these fire safety tips, and I hope that they're useful to you and your family, and I hope you'll put these ideas into practice so that this doesn't happen to you. And please join us again next time where we'll talk about fire prevention. Thank you.